Saint Onufrius the Great was born in the year 320 AD in Ethiopia and was the son of the Persian king and his wife. The king and queen tried many times to have a son, however only after much prayer were they blessed by God with Onufrius. And the devil, realizing that Onufrius was to become a pillar of orthodoxy, he appeared before the king in the form of a peasant and told him that Onufrius was not in fact his son but rather he was the son of a servant. And the devil advised the king, Your Majesty, I suggest that you command your men to throw the baby into the fire when he is born. And if he does not burn alive, then you will know that he is truly your son. But if he does burn alive, then you can be sure that he was conceived through an act of adultery. And the king became full of rage and anger, and keeping this advice a secret, he waited for the right time. And when the queen had given birth to Onufrius, the king took the child and threw him into the fire. However, Onufrius remained unharmed as God preserved his servant, knowing what role he would later serve. Not only did Onufrius not burn alive within the fire, but as the baby sat there, he lifted up his hands to heaven as if he were praying. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the king and chastised him for his unbelief and commanded him to name the child Onufrius and to take him into the wilderness, for he was to become a great ascetic. And the king at once got up and took his son towards the Egyptian wilderness. And as they traveled, a white deer appeared and provided milk for the baby to drink. And this happened many times throughout the journey, to which the king became amazed and said, now I truly know that my son will become a great friend and dear one of God. And arriving at a monastery on the outskirts of the city of Hermopolis, the king went to the abbot and told him the miraculous events. However, the abbot, out of concern for the child, asked, How will we feed the baby, for he is in need of a mother's milk? And the king responded, As the deer have fed him during our journey, so too will they continue to feed him here at your monastery. And a deer remained outside of the monastery and continued to feed the baby until Onufrius was three years old. At the age of three, Onufrius began to eat normal food as the rest of the monks did. And when he was seven, he started asking for bread from the cook and he would go into the church. And here he would go up to the icon of the Virgin Mary, and he would speak to Christ who sat in her arms. And Onufrius would say out of simplicity, You are small like me. How is it that you don't eat anything, but I always need to eat? Here, take this bread so that you can eat as well. And Christ would extend his hand and take the bread from Onufrius as if he were eating it. This miracle did not occur only the one time, but Onufrius would do this almost on a regular basis. And the cook, being curious, one day followed Onufrius into the church and looked on from a distance. And seeing this miracle take place, he ran to the abbot and told him what he had seen. And the abbot commanded him, Don't give the boy any more bread, but tell him to go to the person he gave his bread to all these times and to ask for some bread from him. And the next day, Onufrius, being hungry, went to the icon of the Virgin Mary and told Christ, The cook did not want to give me any bread today, and I am hungry. Can you give me some bread, because I gave you bread so many other times? And Christ extended his hand out from the icon and gave Onufrius a large, white and warm bread, so large that Onufrius, being only seven, could barely carry it. When Onufrius was older, 
He desired to retreat deeper into the wilderness so that he could dedicate his life fully to God through prayer and fasting, taking as an example the lives of St. John the Baptist and Prophet Elias from the Old Testament. And so Onufrius left the monastery in which he grew up, and he stumbled upon a cave in the wilderness where he met an ascetic by the name of Hermes, who taught him how to live in the wilderness. After a few days of teaching Onufrius, Hermes went with him to search for a place where Onufrius could strive in asceticism. And when they found a place, Hermes remained with Onufrius for another month to provide spiritual guidance, but he then retreated and left Onufrius on his own. Hermes would continue to come to Onufrius once every year to provide him with spiritual support until one time he disclosed to Onufrius that he would fall asleep in the Lord during the coming year. One time Onufrius was asked how he received communion, and he answered that an angel of the Lord would come to him and provide him with the holy mysteries. Onufrius lived in the wilderness for seventy years, and his life is known to us because of Abba Pafnutius, who met Onufrius in his final years and was the one who buried his body. One day Pafnutius asked Onufrius, Holy Father, did you suffer much when you came into the wilderness for the first time? And Onufrius responded and said of his ascetical struggles, Believe me, beloved brother, I have suffered so much in this place that many times I lost hope that I would continue to live. I thought that I was close to dying. Many times I would become frail from hunger and thirsting. At the beginning I did not have anything to eat or drink besides the little vegetation that I would find here in the wilderness and the divine dew which would cool me off a little. And during the day I would burn up from the sun and at night I would freeze and my body would become wet with the divine dew. How many things I persevered and suffered through in this deserted wilderness. I cannot speak of my trials and labors because it is not fitting to make known those things which a man is indebted to do for the sake of his love for God. And the good God, seeing that I gave myself fully unto ascetical works and that I put my soul to thirst and hunger, commanded his angel to take care of me and to bring to me a little bit of bread and water every day for the strengthening of my body. In this manner the angel fed me for thirty years, and after these thirty years God provided me with more plentiful food, for near my cave I found a fig tree which had twelve branches. And every month one of the branches would bear fruit, one branch one month, another branch another month, until all twelve months have gone by. And when one month ends, so too does the fruit that it bears end, and another branch begins to bear fruit. So great and miraculous was the life of St. Onufrius the Great. St. Onufrius fell asleep in the Lord in the year 400 AD at the age of 80, and he is celebrated by the Orthodox Church every year on the 12th of June. <laughs> Let's go to the next one.